Hey, I'm really excited. I'm off to see another part of Western Australia. And for this bit, I gotta get a ferry. Right this island. That's our destination. There is one thing. So we're off. Hitting 20 clicks out of Fremantle. In the summer, up to six ferry loads a day make this trip. What, what's the capacity of the vessel? How many uh, people? We hold 329. There's a lot of people going out to the island, isn't it? It is, yeah. The island's an amazing place. Tourists and locals alike love to go on holiday there. But for me, it's all about the wildlife. Described as a rocky outcrop, the place is 11 kilometres long and four and a half kilometres wide. The scenery, words, breathtaking. And the water is alive with action too. This is a colony of New Zealand fur seals. There's about 14 or 15 of them down there playing in the water. But back about 70 years ago, they were hunted almost to the point of extinction. And they're now returning. These guys have been here for the last seven or eight years, and the colony is building up in numbers. You know, some people build their houses in the most peculiar places. What's on that rock is what we call an osprey stack. It's probably been there for as long as 70 years. And in the nest is probably an adult and a large chick. The osprey's a fantastic bird. Their wingspan's about one and a half metres. And they hunt at sea. I wonder if it'll still be there in another 70 years. But by far the most famous residents on the island are these guys. The early Dutch explorers sailed past here in the 1600s and they saw these funny little things hopping around. They thought they were giant rats, so they called the place Rat's Nest Island. So Doug, this is their natural environment, right? That's right, yep. Population density here is enormous. It's estimated up to 12,000 cockers live here. One of the last few populations of these unique little marsupials left in Australia. They come here mainly because we've got a, a good supply of grass yeah. and it caps a lot of moisture. And also it's an area that they don't get disturbed too much. There's been a lot of uh, species that have been introduced to the island. Uh, we finally got rid of all our cats and other uh, species uh, about 15, 20 years ago. And now we're starting to see the natural wildlife coming back. I can understand why people come and look at that. That's right, just the way that you know, the joeys are hanging out of the pouch at this time of year. And you can resist that face. I mean, it's just a really beautiful thing. Across the island, pockets are well adapted to live off the coast of heat, as Cassiana explains. They get a lot of the moisture that they need from that vegetation so they can last for long periods without water. Because most of the lakes on the island here are actually extremely salty, aren't they? Very salty, yeah. When we do our revegetation, we often we have to put guards and um, fencing around to make sure that the quokkas can't get in there and eat them before they get a chance to grow. They're a bit hard to see out in the wild, but once you get into the village area, there are quokkas everywhere. These guys are just so friendly, they walk up to you. Hello, my friend, how are you? So we've got one here that's been fed the wrong things. So you can see how it's, it's started to go ratty um, and the ear damage. You've actually got skin wounds here. Right? That's right, On yeah. On the side over here, yeah. So what happens is as, they, as their shape deteriorates, they start to lose the dominance in their own groups. Yeah. And then they get attacked by the other guys and by some birds. What do people give these guys to eat that they shouldn't? Most of the stuff they give them is, you know, like human food, like bread, yeah. chips, that sort of stuff, that highly processed sort of stuff that's just not good for these guys. And we'll clean him up, put some antiseptic on some of his skin wounds. Yeah. And then we'll try and get him back onto a natural diet. And then we'll take him back out into the back end of the island and let him go out there where he's supposed to be. These are problems we're seeing in our domestic animals as well. So it's not unique to your quaggers. It's a problem that's all over the world. And it's something we need to do something about. Yeah, and the way to do it is to leave the darn things alone, isn't it? That's exactly right. So don't touch them, just photograph them and enjoy them for what they are, a unique little marsupial. Well, I've had a fantastic time here on Rotten Island. The beaches, the scenery, and of course, the amazing wildlife. If 
if you ever are out on the West Coast, it's a little Aussie treasure. So come on over and say good day.